Well, hello everybody. Welcome to another Bird Tricks Tuesday. I'm Dave Womack, and this is Jamie Lee. And so, this um, is Capri. And Capri. <laughs> and she's not wearing a pull-up, apparently. <laughs> um, we're gonna need a towel. Okay, ready to go. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Bird Tricks Tuesday. I'm Dave Womack. This is Jamie Lee, and. This is interrupting Capri. <laughs> so here we are with another Bird Tricks Tuesday. We were getting a question a lot of if we could name the top like one through five, the top easiest birds to work with, um, what would they be? And so we gave it a lot of thought and we actually came up with probably the top three um, for beginner bird owner to expert bird owner. Um, I would say the first easiest would probably be a toucan. The second would be a cockatoo. And the third one most definitely would be a penguin. <laughs> so easiest to hardest, like people were talking about a scale of one to five. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and Today, I want to answer one of the questions that we're getting quite a bit of, and that's where people want us to list the top. So. Hey guys, welcome to another Bird Tricks Tuesday. We're here in Bermuda today. Don't touch it. And our camera chick is... Please. Please don't touch it. Please. Please don't. You want to sit up here? It's melting down a little bit, but um, we wanted to talk to you about a few things. Originally, we were going to talk to you about the top uh, three to five parrots that, that you should get from a beginner bird owner to an expert bird owner, and that didn't work. So today we're going to talk to you about uh, consent is going to set you up for success. In other words, if you set yourself up by having chainsaws in the background, sorry about that. If, wow. Hey guys, and welcome to sweaty, hot, steamy Bermuda. Uh, we're here with another Bird Tricks Tuesday. Originally we were going to talk about birds from basically beginner to advanced and we expected that people expected for us to say a budgie all the way to a cockatoo basically but we're not going to say anything like that pretty much because the reason for that is that all the birds are so different and everybody's situation is so different that it wouldn't really be fair of us to say a macaw is good for somebody or a conger is good for somebody or a cockatoo is good for somebody because everybody's situation is so different um, yeah, even if you've had like a lot of experience with birds and you think you can handle something like a macaw or a cockatoo, but you live in an apartment, it's probably not a good idea. So just because of everybody's circumstance is so different. Um, or if you want to get into free flying birds, you know, you probably want to go with a bigger bird, but that may not fit your situation with where you live. So there's too many variables. So today we want to talk to you about inconsistent consistencies. And what that means basically is setting up the routine of not having a routine. So in other words, what happens if you have a very strict routine with your bird? Let's say you feed your bird every day at 6.30 p.m., which is what we're actually starting to do here on the cruise ship so that the birds aren't able to, um, that we don't want them screaming or making any potential noise during other shows since they are kind of in a staged environment. So what we do is we feed our birds at 6.30, just the macaws, every night at 6.30. If we miss a night, 6.31 comes around, they're screaming, wanting the food. And so, that, that's an example of how being consistent can work against you, especially if you're trying to eliminate screaming. So, you know, our situation is a little bit different where we have to do that. And you may be in a spot where you have to feed your bird at a certain time because you're going to work or you're coming home from work. So we need to be very careful on, on setting up patterns that are predictable. So what we suggest is what we do with the rest of the flock, and that's being consistently inconsistent. In other words, the birds never know when they're getting breakfast, they never know when they're getting dinner. Um, they Keep in mind, I'm not saying they, they, they don't have food in their cage all day. That's something we talk about a lot and, and everything else that we do. But we do have certain times where we do give our birds food and uh, we make sure that that's different all the time. Another thing with consistent inconsistency is um, in our show, I have Bondi on stage. And I think I'm going to show you a little clip of this. I have her on stage and she does a, we call it ring and gumball machine. And what happens is we borrow a ring from the audience and Bondi performs a series of tricks. Do the shopping. Perfect. What's your name? Brittany. Brittany. If you'll please take off your ring and hand it to my wife. <laughs> well, that was easy. <laughs> Watch very closely, Brittany. Bondi flies the ring right here, drops it in my hand. Come on, that's pretty cool. That's a heavy one. We're going to put it right 
right here to keep it safe, all right? Because right now it's time to show off some amazing tricks that these birds can perform. Bob, now you see Brittany sitting there all alone with water all over her dress. I hope that's water. <laughs> you want to tell her something? Want to tell her, hey, cutie? Say, hey, cutie. <laughs> Ever been hit on by a bird before? <laughs> Alright, Bob right here, go and shake my hand. Come on, shake, give, give me a little shake. Yes. And dance with me right now, Bob. Right now, dance in a circle. Come on, dance. Right. This one's my favorite. I call it the Rock Out. I know what you're thinking. Same here. You just witnessed 15 years of bird training in about two minutes. That's it. Okay. Brittany, if you would please stand up right where you are, place your hand out like this, palm up. Nice and strong palm up. Beautifully done. All right. You're not afraid of birds, are you? Perfect. Because in a moment, mom is going to fly to you. When she lands on you, it's very important that you don't kiss her. Italian turkeys. <laughs> Serious folks, though, it's a canarial disease. <laughs> but it's tweetable. Okay. <laughs> Keep on out nice and strong, all right? Because right now, Bonnie's gonna take your ring, she's gonna fly out to you. She'll land on your shoulder. Then she'll walk down your shoulder. So keep your arm nice and tight like that. She'll walk down your shoulder, she'll drop the ring into your arm. Don't have 
happens is if my series of tricks are predictable for Bondi, then what she basically will screw them up, intentionally not doing what I ask her to do because it becomes too boring for her. So what I have to do to counter that is be inconsistent all the time. And so rather than having her fly on stage and cueing the tricks in the exact same order from one to five, what I will do, uh, in other words, the first trick, the second trick, the third, the fourth, and the fifth trick, what I will do is I'll shuffle that up. So maybe she'll do the fifth trick first, which is her saying, hey cutie. Or maybe I will have her wave first or spin first. And so I have to mix that up constantly, otherwise it becomes too predictable, and therefore she knows what I'm going to do, and if she doesn't want to cooperate, then she won't cooperate. So how does this translate to you in your real life? You might find that you want to work with your bird. Oh, thank you, kiddo. You might find that you want to work with your bird um, when you get home from work and you might be running into challenges where the bird, it's a predictable time period, the bird knows that it has to work, it has to think through things, and maybe it's refusing to train. Now this could be refusing to train for a lot of reasons, but it's important that uh, one of the things you do is keep it inconsistent. So don't always train first thing you, when you get home. Don't always train an hour after you get home. Change it up so every day it's a little bit different. And as long as you make sure the bird's food and diet and, um, and maintenance of the diet is correct, you should have a lot of success in your training. Yeah. So one of the things I wanted to mention, but um, my brain starts to shut off when I have a toddler around, is um, inconsistent inconsistency. One of the things that we are consistently doing is we rotate our birds. So I took a long behind the scenes video this week, which I'm going to upload to our channel just on its own because it's about 10 minutes and people kept asking for it even though I was like, that's pretty boring to watch me take care of the birds. Some of you just wanted to see what it looks like. So I did actually take a video of that. Um, what I'm doing is I'm taking care of our smaller birds. So our three sun conures, our one African gray, our two rose breasted cockatoos. And what I do is we have a cage that basically has four different cages. So it's one, two, three, four. I take one bird out or three, depending on if it's the Conyers. I let them out to play and I clean that cage. Then I take one of the other birds, I move them into that cage, close it, it's all taken care of. I clean the empty cage, take a bird from another cage, put it in and clean it. So that's kind of how I do it and that's how I constantly rotate our birds through cages. This is something that we consistently do. It's consistently inconsistent about what cage they're going to be in and there's no rhyme or reason to it. I just kind of pick a bird and take them out or I just go off of body language of hey Cressy looks like she wants to hang out or Bandit's not really looking like he's in the mood to hang out so I'm going to try to get him first or Bondi looks the hungriest, so I'm going to try to clean this cage so I can move her in first. It's just really, really <laughs> inconsistent. And, um, but the only consistent thing about it is that nobody ever becomes territorial. Nobody ever becomes possessive. Uh, nobody ever goes like, this is my cage or this is my space. Because each bird is rotated so much that they don't have a chance to become possessive of that space. So that's one of the things that we do. We also do this with aviaries. I do the exact same thing. I'll take whatever bird out and I will clean that aviary and then I'll just rotate birds through as I clean them. It's just easier for me and whoa, I had no freaking idea that you were there. <laughs> However, e even though that we have to put our macaws um, on a routine right now, when we go home it'll be completely different and it won't be a big deal to, to get them out of it. Like I feel like it's easy to undo. So it's not something that's forever. Yeah, we're able to keep them, because we keep them in the aviary, that's another great consistent inconsistency. We don't always go outside at the same time every day to feed them or water them or take care of them. And so they're never screaming because we miss their feeding time. That, that, that's it. A lot of people miss this, but that's a main reason for screaming is because the bird's screaming because it's hungry. You go in there realizing you haven't fed it yet, you feed it, you're therefore reinforcing the screaming. And if you're inconsistent and you feed at different times and you don't go in there because of bird screaming, you just go in there because it's when it's convenient, your bird's not going to learn that you're predictable and end up showing up. There's actually a funny story about, well, kind of funny. It's maybe the wrong term. There's a story about um, Disney used to release pigeons. Uh, it's not funny. It's not a funny story. But Disney used to release pigeons at the, um, at the end of one of their shows. And it became consistent. And all the hawks realized that this was consistent. So every day at, at noon 30 or whatever it was, the hawks would all sit around because they knew they were about to get fed. And so by not doing the pigeons anymore, it changed up the hawks schedule. And fortunately for the kids, they weren't watching a bloodbath anymore. falling pigeon parts. So you want to make sure that you're, you're just changing up a little bit. Um, I don't know, I guess that's kind of 
think that's probably all I really have to say about it, but um, it is important. So I have a tendency to want to ramble and try to try to carry on with like all the different reasons you want to do it, but strongly consider what you're doing in your life right now with your bird and look at that and see what's, what's super consistent and how can I change that? Don't necessarily fall into the fact that people say, you know, you gotta be predictable, you gotta be consistent with your bird. Yeah. Uh, you don't really necessarily, it's kind of like having a routine. You don't necessarily need a routine with your bird because the more routine you have, the more you never stray away from that routine, the less adaptable your bird becomes. So when you walk into the room with orange shoes that it doesn't like, suddenly it freaks out. Or if you have to move, or you have to go out of town, or a relative has to come live with you, something in your environment drastically changes, the bird is gonna have a really hard time adapting. So it's actually better in the long run for your bird to be able to learn it's how to adapt. It's the same way with people. Like my dad always had the exact same routine. <laughs> God save everybody if the routine changed. He wasn't able to adapt to that strong enough or fast Mommy. enough, and so it became mm -hmm. quite stressful for him. And it's, it's the same with birds as well. It's too bright? Mm -hmm. Even with your glasses? Mm -hmm. You keep your glasses on then. No? Mm -hmm. It's not too bright? Oh. Perfect. So I wanted to end this by just saying thank you to everybody last week. Your your feedback on the Bird Tricks Tuesday video was awesome. Um, lots of positive lots reinforcement. Lots of positive reinforcement, so thank you. Uh, we, we also want to see if you guys have questions. Is there something we can address to you next week or the next several weeks? What, what problems you might be having? And maybe it's very scenario specific, but leave us a comment and we'll do our best to be able to go through those and see which one we think will be able to help people the most and hopefully it can be your, your question. So leave that on the blog or in the YouTube comments. Especially if you've used a course of ours and you need help troubleshooting or you ran into an issue and can't get past it, we'd love to help and find out where there's holes and maybe some of our courses that you have and so we can help you use it better and more successfully. Is there anything you want to tell them? Do you want to tell them anything? You want to say bye? Do you know how to say bird? Uh -huh. How do you say it? Uh -huh. Boots. Boots. This is actually the first time she's ever said birds. They used to be to guys. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next week.